Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Star Sound Speaks, episode 134. This is your host, Irliana Samsara of Star Sound Astrology. And I'm so excited because we have back my wonderful dear star brother, fellow astrologer, fellow ancient astrologer, S.J. Anderson. Yay! Here he is, S.J. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me back, Irliana. Very nice to be here. I'm ex really excited to, to get into all this. So thank you for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so I know many of you have, have not met SJ. Um, in, in, he hasn't been, haven't been here in a year. Gosh, this year has flown. But just as a little introduction, um, uh, SJ is an, I don't know how you say, an Austin-Tinian, was a native of Austin, Texas. <laughs> is that a, Aust Austinite, Austinite. An Austinite. Okay, that sounds like a crystal. Oh, I have some Austinite here with a... <laughs> <laughs> well, you are a crystal. I think of you as that. Um, so yes, he is an Austinite by birth, and he's uh, living abroad. Um, great, wonderful. Um, we have so much in common because um, he has studied Hellenistic astrology, as I, as as you guys know, I'm in my second year with the Chusa at Nightlight Astrology. So um, anyway. Um, SJ is a Hellenistic astrologer. He's also studied Theravada Buddhism and Shivananda Yoga and is a lifetime member of ISAR, the International Society for Astrological Research. So there we go. So anyway, yeah, just wanted to, um, gosh, there's so much going on. And I'm like, oh, I, I just got to add SJ back because we're having this like freight train of astrological influences this month and next month and 2022. So we're just going to have fun. We're just going to kind of riff all over the place. But I just thought maybe, SJ, let's just start with December astrology. We've got the solar eclipse coming up on in two days on the fourth. So um, let me pull up the chart. We can uh, take a look at that and share screen. Here we are. So yeah, um, solar eclipse. This is our final solar eclipse in the Gem Sag eclipse axis, south node solar eclipse in Sagittarius, 12 degrees. Um, yeah, what do you think? What's your feeling for this one? This one I think is, is gonna be quite intense. I think just to quickly, oh, your oops, screen sorry, looks like sorry. it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wrong eclipse, okay. Wrong life-changing experience. Here it is, I'm <laughs> sorry guys. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah, so, uh, so you know, this eclipse, I think, is, is um, you know, it's potent. So let's just put it that way. It's heavy oh. duty. Anytime you have eclipse, one eclipse, they come in a series. And these two eclipses are, are unique. Uh, this eclipse season, we had a lunar eclipse uh, on the notorious fixed star Algol to kick off this eclipse season. Algol has some very, um, let's just say, intense and kind of fearful symbolism. And so we're within, as we speak now, this, what I call the land between eclipses, this kind of realm, it's like a door opens and we're in this kind of portal-esque. A lot of astrologers don't like that term portal. I very much like it uh, just because it, it encapsulates the kind of opportunities and the intensities and the kind of faded beginnings and endings that eclipse season brings. I bring up the solar, uh, the lunar eclipse on Algol because it's, it's really a period of time is how I like to think about eclipses. And so to understand this solar eclipse, we just need to note that we're in it now. This Algol eclipse triggered this energy that now we're building towards. And the thing about this eclipse is that um, there's also a fixed star conjunction with this solar eclipse. It's the fixed star Al Wade. Uh, I think that's how you say it, which is in the uh, Draco constellation, the poisonous dragon. Um, and this is a, another really intense fixed star that, that can kind of portend. Um, let's just come out. I'm going to speak really clearly here. As astrologers, there's always ways to examine difficult energy or dark kind of symbols and, and kind of turn those symbols and kind of explore how we can use those positively and with love and kind of spiritual centeredness. Uh, but, you know, Algol is the head of Medusa. We know that in that myth, um, Perseus, um, you know, cut her head off. And, and that's part of that story, this kind of violent act. But the Draco constellation has some similar mythology in terms of it being associated with poison. Um, and then there was a slaying of this dragon in some of the myths where a Draco was slain. Um, and so, you know, these... To, to come back to the symbolism of both of these eclipses in this whole eclipse season, I just, I do feel like there is a kind of intense questions about, you know, wh what is violence? Where do we find violence in this society? 
how are the is the body protected uh, in this moment and it's worth noting uh, the two big things i'm watching well not three but the three things that i've seen that have been kind of related to these themes during this eclipse season is one we've had um, the return of some of the corona narrative has gone darker and right. you know it, it's always been in the background but right after that lunar eclipse and before the solar eclipse during that leo moon there was a t-square with mars and saturn there was the new variant that's been all over the news that kind of has darkened a little bit the, the doors as it were in terms of the collective a lot of people are returning to some of those fears so there's that event the second one is the Ghislaine Maxwell trial, which is going on, that's kind of disclosing some of the dark yes. underbelly of America. And that um, is particularly important for the solar eclipse because the solar eclipse takes place on the ascendant of the Sibley chart, uh, the United right. States Sibley chart. It's right on that ascendant. And so I think we're seeing the exposure of some, the darkness of the America American narrative, right? That trial implicates people at the highest levels. And then the third thing is the, Supreme Court decision with um, reproductive rights mm -hmm, right. that, that's yes. just come down that's really difficult and challenging and so you know Algol is an energy relating to females and, and women and oppression of women and femininity and I think we're seeing that manifest here um, so I'm going to kick it to you those are just some of my initial yeah, impressions yeah yeah, and I, I was saying in, in the previous podcast about Al Gal, you know, if we all every of course it's it's a terrifying image of you know, you're seeing that the, the slain head and the snakes and the hair and all that. And um but I, I see hope that we can um that this could be a switch from the narrative of this this patriarchy, you know, matriarchy became patriarchy returning to maybe it's about a shift of returning to matriarchal. You know, even the whole thing about, you know, how much of mythology and I've talked Alice Sparkly Cat and others, you know, talked about feminism and astrology and like how there's so much uh, rape and all this uh, uh, rape and women and violation in that's so embedded in Western mythology and like, wow, you know, we, we, we're just so blind to it, but maybe now it's a place where we can reinvent that. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the best things about eclipse season, you know, faded beginnings and endings, but that's often propelled forth by uh, truth, right? Uh, the truth of, a, of reality can emerge as this portal or gateway opens, but uh, as a part of eclipse season, I find it's often these kind of accelerations of fate that are um, directly a result of the truth emerging. And, and often truth is dark, but the upside is that it can be integrated and we can move forward with maybe a more of a, a wholeness. And I certainly think the Medusa myth, when you unpack it, is, a, is about that, uh, you know, yeah, liberation of, of femininity, integrating sexuality in a healthy way. I yes. mean, there's all kinds of themes that, that can be positive with Algol, um, for sure. So, you know, I'm, I'm very, um, every eclipse season, I'm kind of hopeful because we need these movements forward. Sometimes we need intervention from other forces because we're stagnant. Human beings tend to not want to address things. We're, we kind right. of are in denial a lot. It's like very human to be in denial. You know, so. Yeah, and you think about like the luminaries are shut off in an eclipse. And so it's like sometimes just like when the power goes out in a hurricane or something, it forces you, you're in such a comfort zone and then it forces you to just wake up. And so when the lights are shut off, it, it's, a, it's definitely mother nature's cosmic telegram, you know, wait, hello, uh, this, or, you know, this needs to be looked at because it's not being looked at. You know, one thing that comes to me when you're jumping over to the solar eclipse, this coming up, you know, with Mercury under the beams of the sun. So in, in ancient astrology, that means Mercury is very, very close within 15 degrees of the sun. It's any planet is considered under the beam. So Mercury under the beams would be like, and it's also in not in the greatest sign for Mercury, Mercury in Sag, it's an exile. So it's not comfortable being in Sag. So it's, um, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 it's funny, you know, when I think of Mercury, I think of youth, you know, like Peter Pan kind of energy of like this, or some ADD kid. And imagine you stick an ADD kid in a university library, kind of like Mercury and Sag. It's like, oh, now this 
this kid that wants to bounce around is like being, hey, wait a minute, you know, let's get serious here. And so we could look at that narrative and say, you know, maybe there's something of this nature of the news, Mercury and Sag, you know, the news and the news media and high level media outlets. Maybe it's like, maybe there's some kind of truth that is being hidden and the things that we really believe were true, maybe they aren't. And the things that we believe were false, maybe they're really not false. So there, that to me is a possible one way to look at it. What, what do you think? Absolutely, I think that's very um, astute to point out. And um, anytime you think about Sagittarius, you know, I've heard many astrologers or some at least talk about this side of it. Um, it's worth noting the Sibley chart, the United States chart. Mm. Um, this is one of the, the main birth charts for America is this chart called the Sibley chart. Mm. And, Do you want me um, to it pull has... it up? Do you want me to let's see if I can? Uh... Sure, you... I've got yeah. it too. Um, but you do yeah, have it's, it? yeah. Okay. If, you, I... if you enable sharing, I could share it easily and just a sure. push of the button. I have, yeah. I have it ready to enable. go. So enable sharing okay. wait hold on everybody let me just i'm <laughs> i'm like my brain is freezing how do i enable sharing oh how do i do that let's see i think um, if you go to the um participants and then you can see where my name is and you click more there you go you got it oh oh uh, or, did i oh uh, i'm sorry i apologize or, oh yes participants that's right yeah oh more oh like, thank you for my brain just goes Nyer. all right so uh Enable sharing. Let's see. Uh, make co-host. I think that's it. Yeah. No, you're the co-host. Okay, perfect. So here is that Sibley chart. Okay. Um, Thank you for doing that. Oh, you're welcome. And here it is. And this is uh, the thing about it is people have talked about this kind of uh, fascist, fascistic, fascist, fascistic. I, I can't quite say that word exactly, but the idea fascism is a kind of buzzword. You really have to be specific about what, what you're describing. But I think in this case, people have assigned this part of the American character to maybe at times fanaticism mm -hmm. or the kind of patriotism that can come sometimes with this idea of America being zealotry and the flag waving and the zealotry. And it's not just unique to America. I mean, a lot of countries have exhibited this, but in particular, you see these themes of kind of like the red, white, and blue, or even the, you know, um, that, what, there's a famous writer, I think this is G.K. Chesterton, it might be a Chesterton quote where he says, when fascism comes to America, it will be wrapped in the flag and with the Bible or something like this, you know? Oh yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, the idea is that there is, um, this might be part of our character where there's kind of a um, uh, fever of, and this is a fire sign, you know, and Sagittarius is Jupiter, which can really expand and these kind of fever pitch of, of maybe um, ideas or passions that can sort of cloud sometimes. Um, and with Mercury under the beams in Sagittarius, this is why Mercury, I don't think does so well, because when you are caught up in a fiery impassioned moment, it's very hard to say, stop, let's examine this stuff, actually. Let's look at um, other you know, sides. Yeah, yeah, let's just calmly examine the paperwork and let's examine the evidence. That's not what Sagittarius is very good at at all. It wants to get moving and just kind of rush to activity and to judgment. And that can be very fun. That's why we like Sagittarius. Sometimes it's good to let go and just release into the mutability of that, that action, that fiery action. I mean, it's a very positive, there, every, every energy, as you know, and hopefully you know, the listeners out there can, um, can take in is there's, it's always a continuum. There's kind of a shadow manifestation and then a, um, you know, a positive and a kind of spiritual octave for all of these energies. But I think with Sagittarius, that shadow side is this kind of rush to judgment and this ignorance of detail. And so I think, yeah, that's my take on what you said. Basically, I fully agree. And, I, and, and that's something to note. I mean, in our personal lives, it's not just the collective narrative. It's like in our personal lives, it's, it might be good. And I always think about with eclipses to calm down, wake things out, pray, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mantra, you know, really dial the life down because these energies can be so overwhelming that, you know, we have to kind of try to ride it out in a way that is not uh, detrimental. You know, so mm. rushing to action right now may not be the best, the best. Uh, and watching where we're, where we, we, we might be, let's say, have blind spots or 
like if I'm triggered and feel very passionate about something, maybe that's the signal that I need to pause and examine some other sides or just calm down a little bit and Sit recognize and I don't have it. Yeah, right. I don't have the full, um, I, you know, I believe lies. We all believe lies to a certain extent and just calm down. So, yeah. And when I think too about the shadow side of Sag, it's like this feeling of entitlement or pontificating, you know, like, oh, you know, we know what's best for you or, you know, God told me in a dream. Like I remember uh, President Bush saying this during the Iraq war, like God told me in a dream to invade Iraq. It was something like that. Like that, that's just so Jupiterian, you know, well, God said, so I'm going to do it. And I, you know, thank you for sharing that this doesn't agree with you, but I don't care because I'm going to tell you how this is what you have to do, you know? And it's like, it's, yeah, it can, that get, that can be the nasty side of, <laughs> there's always a shadow. So, yeah. And I think too, with, with that, when you said about the, um, you know, with, with, Mercury under the beams and in exile in this eclipse, it's really, I to me, that's a big cosmic wake up call. Like this, the, the, the universe is saying, look, you know, look at the truth, look at the facts. Let's not uh, let, let this be obscured because they're, they're being obscured and we have to really deeply, like you said, go within and really discern the truth. And I would say even like the ultimate truth, not getting caught up in all this hoo-ha. Yeah. Yeah. And this is and this is another part of it is that um, this is the final eclipse of the long series of eclipses uh, along the Sagittarius Gemini axis that began with a lunar eclipse in June 2020. And so anytime you have a, a finality like this and the true node doesn't change signs that the true south node will not enter Scorpio until January, the mean south node, I think, is in February sometime entering Scorpio. So there's still a little bit left of this Sagittarius Gemini nodal energy, but there will not be an eclipse there, another eclipse in either of those mm -hmm. signs for what, nine years. Mm -hmm. um, but, but we're dealing with, a, I, I like to reflect, you know, let's think about June or uh, May, June uh, until now. And what, um, is there something, a theme or can we, a story? can we, can we knock off that, that period of time and what stories were emergent and kind of dominant? And I certainly think co uh, COVID to say, to, to go there, um, you know, that seemed like, even though it hit in March, it's not until this eclipse cycle that we're kind of piecing together after the initial shock of what is this and two weeks to flatten the curve. And then this cycle, I think, has been about integrating in all the facts that we've discovered and the collective narratives around it. That's certainly been a big part of this eclipse cycle. We've seen uh, the Ghislaine Maxwell. She was arrested right after in June or July 2020. And yes, now her trial was. is here. Right. So that's been part of this eclipse cycle. Um, and it's Mercury you know, rules trafficking, you know, like the trafficking yeah. theme, huge theme during the gem sag cycle. A absolutely. And so, um, you know, it's, and even in our personal lives, it's like, okay, June, June, 2020 to now, what's, where am I, what's changed? But, but, but the other part of it is getting ready to shift. So some of these narratives may be shifting into a new flavor, new colors or a new back ground or a new foreground with some of this stuff and um you know and, and in a certain extent this is is a closure a moment of closure um where we can kind of acknowledge the power of the eclipse it's even thank the eclipse energy i know a lot of times astrologers have a kind of a fear uh, not bad fear i'm not trying to criticize but you know eclipses as being this these kind of moments that we should like oh my god no yeah, I, I run for the hills it's like, yeah <laughs> get out of the eclipse light and these right, are survive uh, it. You need, right you need to survive it like no you don't need to you need to thrive in it use it a bad mode bad omens kind of thing and i do think they deserve high levels of respect but also i think we get to thank you know, the eclipses, because I do believe it's the hand of God coming into the reality to rearrange and kind of give us the nudges we need, you know, and that can often feel horrible because um, we don't want to see it. We don't want to we don't want to be forced into the, where we need to go, um, you know, and so that's just something here. I think we're kind of a finality, a closure and kind of thanking those eclipses to, um, uh, you know, let's see here. Um, Oh. just to acknowledge what they've done so okay i'm gonna this continue no okay. oh i stopped I, I, the share just to yeah okay, cool yeah, to, yeah take yeah 
Did you want to talk about the, um, you know, we just mentioned about when I, the Venus, you know, Venus, as I said to, you know, all of you guys out there, you know, Venus only retrogrades every year and a half. So we really pay attention to it. And this time with its conjunction with Pluto, the first thing certainly what comes up is the Ghislaine Maxwell trial and reproductive rights, very loud, very loud right now. And the fact that they're shutting out the media from her trial, and they're saying that some of these details that are going to be put in the testimony are too, they're just too intense for people to hear. It, it, it's just nonsense, you know? But again, that's that Pluto energy of secrecy of people at the highest levels being covered up. And then I think too of like re reproductive rights, they, unfortunately, you know, that, that row weight is so on the line, it's so delicate. So I'm kind of holding my breath on that one as Venus goes retrograde. Yeah, I think the Venus retrograde is a very important one because it's hitting um, oh, let, the same degree. Uh, you want me to pull it up, the Venus retrograde? You can, uh, you can if you'd like. I mean, I, I um, yeah, just whatever you want to share there for sure. So uh, Venus retrograde. Here we are. Transiting Venus turns retrograde. Da -da -da. Here it is. Here's the chart of Venus retrograde. Uh, are you looking at the retrograde station there, right? It's um, on the 20th. Um, Let's see here. There you go. Yeah, the 19th, 19th of December. In, yeah. in, the, in the Eastern time zone, it's uh, 19th of December. Yeah. So so the thing about this for Venus retrograde is, is that it's going back over all of the hot degrees of 2020. Remember that spring of 2020 where we had Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, yes, uh, the South Node, Pluto, all conglomerating there in Capricorn. Late degree, in, right, right here. In those late degrees. Um, and that's what triggered the crisis we're in, you know, astrologically. That was the big period that triggered the crisis. And so we're now 18 months into the crisis or more. This will be about almost two years now into the crisis. And I do think that this is telling us that it's time to reevaluate. It's time to, you know, uh, we're going to have to be processing on deeper levels just what it is that we've gone through over the last two years. And there's certainly been a sense of shock. And that I'm still, I mean, I'm still in le levels of shock around all of the changes in my personal life and all the decisions I had to make around, you know, lockdowns, shutdowns, closures of countries, chain mm -hmm. all the, in I mean, and, and, and I'm sure I, I talk to a lot of people every week. A lot of people are going through similar, uh, you know, it went through similar upheavals in their lives. And so part of this to me feels like a review of, and a kind of deep, yeah, uh, you know, review is what retrogrades are. They, we look back, we, and we, we feel with Venus, I think it's more of a feel, a feeling review. It's not like a Mercury retrograde review where it's maybe more intellectual or like business oriented. This is more emotional. Right. And, and, um, and social <laughs> too. And social. Yeah. Yeah. Just, and, you know, so that's why I say it's emotional because relationships are sure. about, they're not about the mind. They're about certainly part, part of it can be the mind, but it's how people make us feel. Yes. And the comfort and the, and the spiritual, the connection is a great keyword for Venus. So we're kind of reviewing connections and, but related to the upheavals, there's certainly a component of this Venus retrograde. And then the one other thing I'll say quickly is that, Venus will be in these Saturn ruled signs, Capricorn and then Aquarius until 5 April. And so we've got to get used to Venus being ruled by Saturn. It's, it's we're here now and it will be, I think five months total by the time it's all said and done. Mm. And this is, you know, seriousness around our connections, the longevity around connections. Maybe we're purging and we're kind of focusing on people that really can serve us or are reliable. You know, Venus Saturn can be very constructive in terms of boundary setting and finding reliable people that can really love us and in in, with a strong container, you know? And so mm. that's kind of the opportunity that I see here against everything in the world is sort of purifying and purging a little bit some of the relational dynamics to help us get through this really difficult period that we're currently in and still in, you know, so. Right. And when I think too about Pluto in Capricorn, it's and with that Venus conjunct, it's I mean, the Venus journey has that Plutonian influence of look, we have to get rid of these toxic elements. If you want a sustainable world, if you want healthy, sustainable relationships, you have to look at that dark side. You've got to go through that dark side of the soul 
the dark, whatever they, the dark night of the soul in order to come out the other end and reinvent and reprogram into something healthy. But it's like facing that shadow, but you know, knowing that we're all in this together and, and how it does play out in the collective. Um, I, I think too of the, um, you know, this is all happening just as America is going into its Pluto return it, it, which is the, the, in other words, Pluto is at the same degree at, uh, of um, 27 degrees, 33 minutes in the, in the um, USA chart. So that's the same degree as it was when the country was founded. So, um, you know, but now in this Jupiter and Saturn and Aquarius this year, you know, you can see that, and that shift, it's become a war of ideology, you know, as, as so much, so, so strongly. And, and, uh, and, and I think too, um, there was a, um, let me see if I'm gonna see if I can, um, I need to uh, pull up a picture, um, a beautiful picture of a, a, a cathedral. Uh, the, what was it, 1226 was the time, last time I think that Jupiter and Saturn were in conjunct in Aquarius at the degree of um, at like zero or one degree. You know, it was like, man, like a long time ago. And uh, so, Oh, what's that? Rem's Cathedral. Yeah, I I love this cathedral. This um, that was the, the so at that time when you see the the interior of Rem's Cathedral. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, there's a great picture. Um, let me pull this up for you guys and uh, stop share and I'll show you this cool photo. Okay, so here's the interior, this beautiful cathedral. So here's about the time when Jupiter and Saturn and Aquarius. Um, where when I think of Aquarius about technology, technological breakthroughs. So I remember my, I loved art history. And I remember this, that the, the teacher was telling us how, what a breakthrough this was in the cathedral building of the time in the, before the uh, high, this is like high Gothic period, these low, heavy, chunky buildings, the Byzantine era of cathedrals, they were low ceilings, they didn't have the technology, but somebody invented the flying buttress, they perfected it. So that it enabled the walls to be built very, very high, and therefore have these gorgeous uh, ceilings and look at all the light that can come in to the, um, and then these, another, see, it's not, it's not just one level, it's two levels, so it's more light and um, and more uh, you know sunlight on all sides. So it, this technological breakthrough enabled religion to flourish in this whole new way. And I, I also think too, it's the Crusades, the, I, the like this whole idea of religious and spiritual ideas and technology and religion were married at, at that time, you know, with this cathedral. So now with last December when Jupiter and Saturn came together at zero Aquarius, here it is again, except it, it's not a cathedral. It's, it's actually, you know, <laughs> I can't stand him, but Mark Zuckerberg, metaverse. He, do you know, I, I just read this SJ before I, we got on this call um, that he introduced, uh, I think people know that he's introduced this new thing beyond Facebook called Meta or Metaverse, but there was this article in the Times that talked about how he is now partnering with all these churches in America, these various churches, to bring everyone online to have their church services online. So there it is, technology and religion marrying all over again, just like the year 1226, although this is way scarier. It's just crazy, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. And I mean, that was the time that uh, last, uh, we might say, age of air in terms of the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction. So they meet Jupiter and Saturn every 20 years, but they meet in the same element uh, and they'll stay meeting in the same element for roughly 200 years. Mm -hmm. And then they shift to the next element. And the last time we just started in 1980 and 2020 and 2000, um, a series of uh, kicking off these, this process by which we now are fully in the age of air with respect to Jupiter and Saturn's conjunctions. Um, and the last time it was 1200 roughly, I don't have the exact, but basically 1200 to 1400 was that same period. And um, yeah, I have a whole video on my YouTube channel about this where I really broke it all down, but you have Genghis Khan, right. uh, he's key he conquered the world, but you have technologies of all kinds, which came eyeglasses, gunpowder, Gun um, trading right. routes that were developed. Right. 
Uh, now this to this, I didn't realize this building technology with the gothics. I mean, that's that's extremely powerful. So yeah, we're entering into a period, and I think where technology is certainly going to be the technological kind of takeover of the life. And this, how does the human spirit and the human body and the human kind of person interact with this technology? so that we are uh, protected and kind of uplifted in, a, in the maximal way. And I think met, the meta, uh, metaverse, the term metaverse was around before Facebook rebranded as meta, but the metaverse is this kind of digital realm that we enter. It's kind of like VR, but you'll have a lot of more economic activity and maybe an avatar. And I think there's some upsides to it. I mean, I can see having, like well, this is kind of a metaverse in a way of what we're doing here on Zoom. It's just that this will be built out way more and a lot more economic activity may be brought into this space. You know, so I, I, I'm kind of in some ways excited about it, but in other ways, you know, really aware that we'll have to retain our humanity, meditate and pray, uh, you know, separate out and get back into nature as much as we can and then interfacing with the metaverse in ways that are healthy uh, as much as possible, mm. you know, and, and we might have to, you know, we may have to push back against some of the <laughs> things that, that become popular, things like injectables or, you know, um, wearables that might be kind of uh, pervasive and um, uh, omnipresent. Some people, I think, are going to enter a space like that where you don't have a separation from the metaverse in terms mm. of the technology being literally embedded into the body. That's the kind of stuff I think it's we so would want to avoid. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's in, so my, in my view, I would want to avoid that, but, you know. Yeah, some of it all, I think will be good. It's just what I'm saying. <laughs> right. It's like, oh, well, it's the guys of progress. It's like, okay, but there's always that shadow. And um, gosh, can you imagine? Not, we'll have to do this another time. The Pluto's entrance into Aquarius. I know we're jumping ahead of ourselves, but uh, that that will be uh, pretty outrageous. But we, we before we even get to that, we we're still dealing. We have to let's get through this Pluto return. <laughs> 2733 Capricorn. Um, and, you know, and I also think too of um, here it is, you know, and again, this is just simply uh, walking this middle path, not taking sides, but just simply sharing that, you know, I've been reading about how many people in the military, these soldiers in the American military have not wanted to somehow taken the vaccine, uh, you know, uh, thing for COVID and others, so many um, have this huge faction that has not. And so to me, it's like, wow, there it is, like the war of ideas and ideologies, right? Air signs. And so these beliefs about, you know, no, uh, no, we're, we're going to rebel against this, you know, so you see, you see how it plays out. It's, it's, it's fascinating. And, you know, what are you going to do if you, you know, we, we got just the other day, they said, we're not going to do uh, mandatory vaccinations. It's just going to, I guess, simply continue with choices of companies, but you see all these things at play and it's, um, yeah, it's kind of scary. Like, how's this all going to turn out? But the only answer I can say is keep developing your spiritual path. Keep keep uh, walking, you know, breathing and staying centered. And yeah, not so much time online, right? <laughs> or the phone. And uh, <laughs> it's yeah, not easy. It's, yeah, I think it's worth just mentioning if we're talking about the Pluto return. It's in the second house, the Sibley chart, second house of the economic health of the nation. And mm -hmm. I am getting the sense, like I'm not a, a financial, pure financial astrologer by any means. I mean, those guys are really running data and really analyzing cycles. I don't have that kind of depth in terms of my practice, but I do follow that some. And I do think we, we I would not be surprised if there's some economic downturn. There's an inflation problem right now, runaway inflation. That usually doesn't end well because people can't afford things can't afford the basics. And then you have people having being forced out of their jobs because of this choice around the mandatory medical interventions. I think in a lot of places you may end up with a crisis here, an economic crisis that um, could be coming here. And I wouldn't be surprised, like I said, as astrologers, we hate to predict things that could create fear, um, but I do think that there could be some economic downturn and I, or I wouldn't be surprised if that took place. And so it's good to just think about that as a potential scenario and how might you prepare for that or having, you know, like last winter during that uh, new moon in Aquarius square, uh, Mars and Taurus and Texas, the power went out for a week. Mm -hmm. You know, there might be things to just have some cash, have some canned food, you know, preparing for maybe if there's shutdowns or a crisis of some kind, that's always good to have. 
Uh, but I do think, yeah, just this this idea of the inflation and what happens when you know people leave their jobs and what's going to happen. And it's the thing is about the Pluto return, this is it, 2021, right now and 2022, particularly, let me get the exact month. There's like a date in there. It's like, I think this February where you have um, in 2022, let's see here, it's, you have a, a pile up in Capricorn. And the one way that astrologers mm. like to look at transit. So I'm looking at 30 January, 2022. Mars. You want to pull, it, pull it up? Sure. You want to pull it up on the screen? Sure, sure. Um, the one, one way to examine any transit is you can say, yes, it's the exact Pluto return. But I think more than that date of the exact return, which is February, I think 22nd, maybe as mm -hmm. one I've heard yeah. early March. Yeah. Isn't is that interesting? The Washington's birthday. Oh my God. That's crazy. That's huge symbolically for sure. That's a big symbol. Symbolic. Yeah, uh, that's thing. really Twilight Zone music. Do 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> no, please, no. That's great. I mean, no, that's huge. I mean, no. I just first time I've heard that, and that's I think like it's like that lightning bolt that hit the Washington Monument. I think during the eclipse, the Great American Eclipse, like right. around that period. And yeah. cracked the Washington Monument. Remember that? Oh my God, was... I got chills when you said that. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the thing is that here in January, you will have uh, Pluto, Mercury, the moon, Mars and Venus mm -hmm. all in Capricorn. And there's this, this heavy conglomeration during a Mercury retrograde. It's not just that Venus retrogrades, but Mercury will station earlier in January and then it comes back into Capricorn. And so this to me feels like maybe the climax of the Pluto return here in January. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some sell-offs in the market. The cryptocurrency space could be selling. I know a lot of crypto astrologers are talking about Jupiter and Pisces bringing the market down, and that could have a cascading effect. Um, and so I would be prepared for, yeah, some kind of economic stuff that's going to potentially go down this winter on top of everything else. Um, I, this does not look um, very easy to me and to others I've talked to. This looks like a really kind of trying and sort of difficult moment um, okay. here for the collective as we get into this to this Pluto return, because it's all Saturn. Look, it's Saturn rules. Yeah, Saturn, 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 the moon. Saturn, Saturn. It's, it's all of the planets. Six of the seven traditional will be Saturn ruled again. And, Saturn and the, moon, the, the moon's going to be in there for a little bit, you know? Yeah, every time the moon comes through here, it'll be like, I think two cycles of the moon activating that. And yeah. um, just to say quickly, I don't think, I don't think, I think talking about 2022 has to include this discussion of when Pluto ingresses and hits zero Aquarius in 2023, the point where Jupiter and Saturn conjoined on the winter solstice 2020 as a major activation for the Go crisis. For yeah. And so it's, it's worth mentioning that because it's going to be a continuity between 2020, December, and all of 2020, really. And then this Pluto into Aquarius in the early degrees into 2023, 2024, and 2025. We're in that MLU. And I don't think there's a, it, it, what it, for your listeners, one way of thinking about it is this crisis, buckle up because we're not out of this and we may not be getting out of this for a few years. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I want to mention here uh, about 2022 and about March is that Andre Barbeau, some people mm. may have heard of him, famous yes. French astrologer, pioneered an outer planet measuring, measuring technique, predicts a pandemic crisis in 2020. His uh, read Pred of, He predicted uh, that like 10 years ago. He predicted he, it, I think, yeah, 2011, 2012. He yeah. had an article that predicted it. too bad it, he's and, passed on. You know, we'd love to interview him. <laughs> he, yeah, he passed on just, he, he, he pieced out in late 20, mid to late 2019. He was like, all right, wow. here's my prediction and I'm gone. He was in his wow. 90s. So he, right before the pandemic hit. Right, he was out. right before wow. he, he said bye. And, but he's wow. got writings and he says 2025 is when it's over. So, um, but the thing is, his index, and I won't bore everyone with the measurement tool, but you basically measure the distance between the five modern outer planets. When it, it hits its lowest point, and I did hand calculations because of the software available won't do that for you. I, 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 I got the software that I could find, but I, I did the hand calculation. The exact bottom is, I think, March 25th or March 26th of his index, 2022. 
And so right. we're now hitting bottom. Now tell me what that, what that is again, the measurement. Can you explain that? Yeah, yeah I will. Um, yeah, and I'll, and I'll just, I'll, I'll do it as um, simply as I can. Basically, you take the five modern outer planets, and that would be Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So I, ca I call those the modern outer planets, because I think in the 21st century, we're sort of reformulating some of that. You know, there's questions about Eris and Ceres. If you notice in my charts, I always include Ceres and Eris, the other dwarf planets, mm -hmm. because I think they deserve part of the conversation if we're going to get Pluto in. And there's a whole, there's Humea, there's Mekmek. There's a bunch of them that are very important, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but modern outer planets are the planets that astrologers in the second half of the 20th century kind of settled on, as these are the nine astrological planets or the 10 astrological planets. And so um, when Barbeau was developing this technique, that was what was popular amongst astrologers. And so what you do is you just measure the distance. And actually I have, I can change my screen here. I think I have a setting where I just include those. So here's the app, here's Pluto with Uranus and Neptune. And let me just add, actually, um, I, uh, let me see if this is it. No, give me, this will just take one sure. yeah, yeah. Quick second. Everybody Here take is. a sip of water. <laughs> yeah, here it is. I got it right up. I knew I had one that had pre-populated it, but here's the five. And all you do is measure the distance between them. So if we start with Pluto, what are the degrees between Pluto and Saturn, the degrees between Pluto and Jupiter, the degrees between Pluto and Neptune, the degrees between Pluto and Uranus, and then you go Saturn with those three, with the three it hasn't been measured against, Jupiter with the two it hasn't been measured against, Neptune with the final one, Uranus, and you add a number, you get a total number, and then you graph that. And so uh, I'll show you an example, actually, you can just quickly pull it up on uh, any uh, search engine. Let me just Google this for folks, because you'll see it, this will be an easier way to visualize it. I just type in Barbo index to DuckDuckGo, the search engine I use. Let me share this screen here. And you can see, um, you can see here this measurement of the planets here, right? And here, this this uh, from this website, Time Price Resource Astrofin.blogspot, it just measures the highest number is when you have this is an, an this is inverted. This person inverted it. So um, when it's when you're looking at it, let me see if I can find one that's not inverted. Um, Let's see here, this one's not inverted and this is a great one. So that's the Cold War. Actually, that's not the one I want. There's, here, here it is, here it is. So this is from a website, uh, hanaverana.net. This article is amazing. If people wanna go there, I can send it to you if you wanna include it in the links, okay. but con Contraction, Crisis and Revolution, 2020 through 2024. Is there and any way using... you can make that a little bigger? Oh, there you go. yeah, I'm going to, I just try, I just, oh, there it can is. you see this better now? Is this yeah, a little bit bigger? Much better. Okay. Thank you. You're, you're so here you go. This is his index, the dark blue line. That's you see how that measurement I just described is getting smaller and smaller as the outer planets contract with each other. They get closer together and this index number drops. And <laughs> I'll just say this, it's the same principle we have in uh, astrology in terms of planets contracting and expanding the, lo the lunation cycle, right? The sun and moon contract together and then they send out and expand and it's the idea of growth. And then that full moon is the apex of growth and, they, and then the sun and moon join together. And so it's the same principle here, except you're measuring five planets against each other. And he did this research and found that when these five modern outer planets are contracted, it's a crisis point. So wow, the way this that. technique, yeah, the way it came to be was that after, before World War II, there was a big astrological conference in Europe and no one predicted World War II. And so after the war, people, Barbeau and others were like, what happened? How do we miss this? And they, he developed this technique, but this technique predicts the war because uh. that's the low point in the cycle right around uh, World War II and when World War II happened. I don't have those exact numbers memorized. But here we are. So 2014 is when this chart that you're looking at starts and then you it starts descending 2015 2016 Trump right and the crisis that that brought 2017 we're now descending 2018. Uh, you know, all of the intensity of just what we went through 2019. Now, this is where we hit COVID, right. 2020. And now you're getting towards the very bottom of the index. And you have here Saturn, Pluto, February 2020, Jupiter, Pluto, uh, April, June and November 2020, Saturn, mm -hmm. Jupiter, December 2020. Now you bottom here 
right here uh, in 2022. See, this is measuring probably once a year, and this has it at on 2022. I hand calculated it. It's March 25th, I think, 26, 2022. So it's a few days before Jupiter Neptune it's conjunction. It's the bottom, and so we hit bottom in March. We hit bottom. And, and that's what I, I I bring this up to just it it actually. Um, underscores and confirms this idea of the Pluto return, which happens at before we hit bottom, this Venus retrograde and all this Saturn ruled conglomeration that happens in January and February and March mm. this year. And it's not until April 5th, Venus comes and hits Pisces. And I think that April moment is really when we come out of what will probably be one of the most intense winters in our lifetimes. I don't say that yeah. lightly. But just yeah. seeing the news, I mean, I've got friends in Germany and Austria and all over the EU and in Australia and not to necessarily take sides one way or the other. I think no matter what side you're on, it's kind of objective that when you have these kind of shutdowns of society and these kind of segregations, it really hurts the economy. It hurts the morale of the collective. You know, even if you think people should be kind of going along with what's happening and they're not, that can divide society for those that don't want to go along and now losing their jobs. That's a really difficult time. And this is happening, you know, in many countries all over the world. And it's part of this story. Um, it's it's not just that issue, but I think it's the stock markets. It's a lot that's, that's happening. Um, and there's a lot. I mean, I think there's so much more to talk about crisis here. Maybe one other thing I want to add, and I hate to, you know, as astrologers, we have a code of ethics. We really don't want to engender fear. And I guess I should just stop here and say, listen, if you, this is not to give fear, it's to, it's to have an honest look. You know, humility is on it is when we honestly look at things, even if they're difficult. You know, we're we're having to walk a fine line between sugarcoating and mm -hmm. and too much of that kind of love and light that is maybe denialism. And then right. at the same time, see maybe difficulty on the horizon, but can, you know, but walking a really bit, really, really fine line. And just to be clear, I'm very optimistic. Things you said earlier about the spiritual center of all beings, uh, the godlike core in our hearts that we can, I think about it as the shard of divinity that, you know, we can quicken, you know, that love exists, that's not going away, but the world does sometimes go through these crisis points and we're living through one. And this winter yes. in 2022, I think, is, is going to be some a new leg and a new kind of climax around some of that. So that's really, I just want to be clear about it. But, you know, the Cuban Missile Crisis, this happened in 1962 when Jupiter was in Pisces and had just left that co-presence with Saturn and Aquarius and while Saturn was still in Aquarius. And that's really where I'm mapping the collective mm -hmm. energy right now is the 60s. We're in the 1960s because the early 60s, as Jupiter comes into Aries, Kennedy's assassinated with Saturn still in Aquarius. And so I think there's another kind of deepening of this crisis that will hit maybe potentially and kind of change the flavor of what we're all going through. And it fits with Barbo's timeline of 2025 as being when it's over. Um, but, you know, the good news, Cuban Missile Crisis was just a crisis that, it, you know, the worst case scenario didn't happen, but there may be more of that fever pitch that we were talking about earlier of just, mm -hmm. you know, difficulties that we're going to have to go through in the, this collective purge that's going to happen. And we all have a role to play. You know, I like um, this astrologer uh, who uses the Barbos cyclic index. I learned this from this astrologer, William Stickovers. Mm -hmm. He talks about um, this. He's a Jungian and he talks about these kind of collective unconscious purges that are necessary mm. and that's the opportunity of this crisis is that we're we're going through a collective purification and that we each have a role to play with spiritual centering and 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 you know things so so anyhow it's a lot yeah. there i just i hate yeah. to unload like it's gonna no, be difficult it's wonderful trying, yeah brilliant i didn't know any of this existed with with barbeau i mean my goodness uh and this is important and like you were saying yeah, it's a long dark night of the soul, but we have to always come back to, you know, who are we in relation to this? Like, we're not here to sugarcoat. That's a disservice, you know, and that that could be karmic to sugarcoat, you know, because then we're robbing somebody of an opportunity or us collectively to evolve. But then you don't want to put fear in either. That could be karmic too, because then it stops people from evolving. So it's definitely that razor's edge that we're we're walking here. And I, I like, you know, and I'll say it again, it's like the only antidote is how do we hold this in our heart? Do we see this as something to be avoided or to jump, you know, 
hide under the bed. It's like, no, it's, this is being given for a reason. There's a reason why this contraction is occurring. It is a part of nature. Nature is always expanding and contracting. So we can't just abhor contraction. There's, you know, I always said, when, I was like chicken little in 2019. I, I gave so many talks. Remember in the old days when we actually met in person? And I kept saying, okay, everybody, listen, next year, it's 2020 is gonna be intense, okay? I'm sorry, I don't mean to like burst anybody's bubbles, but I gotta be real with you. I can't not say this, you know? But I remember saying, when you um, contract, there's, uh, and, and this is, probably, maybe this is, I, I feel this is to cap off everything you're saying, SJ. The contraction does serve a divine purpose, and that is, and I know this from, okay, eight years of Catholic school, right? I had the little Catholic school girl with the plaid uniform, and we always had to, we, you know, we, we practiced um, at Lent, 40 days of Lent. You had to take your candy money and put in this silly little cardboard box they gave us. Don't get, don't buy candy. Deny yourself. You're supposed to give it, and then you had to give it to the nuns who they gave it to the poor. Okay, but there was this contraction, right? Nobody liked that. We wanted our bubble gum, right? But, and of course it, it got lost in the, in the, in the dogma of, of all that, but the contraction serves a purpose. As we contract, or as I said in my talks, it's like pressing a water balloon in. If there's contraction on one side, there's expansion on the other. So contraction is only in one place, in one dimension. It is allowing us you know, consider that this is this is like the divine's golden opportunity to help us evolve. Because if we take away our comfort zone, we are going to be forced to um, not that you have to evolve. It's a choice, of course. But we will we can move through and experience something else um, which lies beyond this. That but that contraction is here for a purpose. So I think that's the only way I know for me the only way I know how to make sense of this and to, and it pulls me through, through the fearful, scary part of what's coming and what's occurring. That's all I had to say. Yeah, no, <laughs> Thank I think, you. I mean, it's, no, you're, that's beautiful. And it's, it's, I mean, I tell people, even before any of this, I mean, when people in a personal crisis, there's kind of a point you have to say, you know, is God real? Is love real? Is life worth living really? And we're all having to kind of confront that, core existential question at some point in our lives where we'll be faced with that a lot of us and you know I believe <laughs> I've gone through that in my life you know several times or not not you know not like a few big periods a few one or two where like I was confronted with those questions and I'm grateful that I said yes to life and and I've been I love life and I love being a human and the love and the connection and the beauty that exists but my, my deep appreciation of that comes out of, you know, crisis points in my personal life. And so this is a collective version of that. And the good news is that Barbo says, by the time we get to 26, so you can see on this chart, you hit 2025 and then 2026, and then look at this rise, 2026, 27, 2028. It's not only, it's a dramatic rise. And he says that we enter by this time, we'll be fully in the new world civilization, I think is his exact phrase. And it's this the best astrology of the, of the century happens in the second half of this decade. If we wow. can just get through this crisis that we're going to have the best, the best time there, there is going to be. And so, you know, I would, I just, it's hang on, you know, love your neighbor. I love the Christ. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it isn't, you know, I, I, I grew up Catholic as well, but I mean, Christ is, such a beautiful the red letters of that new testament there's so much beauty there and as a spiritual aid and i'm I, i'm a buddhist basically and other i'm an eclectic spiritual person but that red letters of christ i think can be, can be some core wisdom loving others uh, trying to be there for others loving ourselves you know and hang on it's just this this is extremely difficult astrology extreme it's you can't under you can't underestimate it almost i mean you can't overstate mm -hmm. it rather how difficult right. this is. So just, you know, the self-compassion is a big part of it, I guess is what I'm saying. And then this excitement, mm. hold on for some of that hope. Look at that, that hope, that rise. 
think yeah, it'll be real. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it so, can be just two words to boil it down is hang on. I love that. Just hang on. And it's great to see. It's like, because, you know, when you're in it, you don't really, you think it's just going to happen forever. It's like, that's what I love about astrology. That's what I think is so incredibly important about astrology is that it shows us, hey, look, we can show you when you're, when you're going to come out of this. Here, here's when you, you know, so hang on. Because without it, we, in the years before I discovered astrology, you know, we all went, I went through hell. I, nobody who, if you don't have astrology in your life, you, you're not seeing these cycles and you don't know. And so all, think of all the despair um, that can be avoided when you see, like we just saw that chart. It's like, okay, whew, we can, we got this. We got this. And, and I just want to show you this other chart. That this is a, to, um, visually uh, express what you just uh, mentioned because this is the chart of 10 july 2026 and look at the beautiful geometric elegance this is only those five modern outer planets again and they will all be a bit so other than jupiter um and saturn they're all at four degrees or in the fifth degree or four degrees pluto will be in the fifth degree of aquarius neptune in the fifth degree of aries uranus the fifth degree of gemini and Jupiter will be applying to all of them. Um, and so you have this beautiful trine sextile combination of this kind of basket here made by trines and sextiles with these planets that geometrically represents in solar fire. It's this beautiful royal blue uh, uh, rather than this red, but this kind of beautiful royal blue free flow between these modern outer planets that is kind of the, the prize maybe at the end the, yeah, the treasure the at the end of the rainbow yeah, yeah or something like this yeah let me let me turn it here i'll use the hour yeah. thing to just turn it here so you can see this basket yeah something like this look at that, look at that basket i Trying love to it six time. yeah and just to just to express so pluto will be applying uh, that'll be the 10th urine. of july 2026 so that's yes. um you know only five not even you know four yeah, a little over four years out a little over four years out and um yeah so you know it's just there we don't can't even imagine i mean i honestly don't even try to imagine what this could mean collectively because the purges that we're going through 2020 2021 2022 maybe into 2023 2024 we'll see it's i mean who could have thought uh in 2019 that by 2021 the globe would be locked down for a lot mm. of people, you know, the whole world would be changed the in the way that's been changed. Yeah. Totally, un totally unfathomable. And that's why I think the shock that I was saying earlier, a lot of us are still in shock at even at sure. unconscious levels. Yeah. There's a shock that's happened. The cognitive so, dissonance, like I, I can't, yeah. 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 So I just, I think this was a nice segue because it really contextualizes 2022 and that cat. So we just to come back that, that Capricorn pile up with the, we're still really on a Venus retrograde, right? Where we started, right? right. Where, you know, right after the eclipse, because that Venus retrograde is triggering the Pluto return, which triggers the crisis, which is in this context of the Barbeau system. And then this kind of final transit. Mm. Yeah. So this is a great way to Look, look look at the context not just uh, yeah for the next few years and um and and for 2022 that if you could how would you phrase that then for 2022 like overall astrology uh you know getting we're, we're fully in it and we you know like you said hang on um this I is say, all being fermented it's work in progress the alchemy it's like the the bread's in the oven and it's the yeast is rising and it's it, it's it's messy but and it's painful the heat but but you're going to get something fabulous i don't know whatever you tell me tell us yeah, I, my phrase which is simply uh, chaos and then i have uh, counterculture is the other those are my two big keyword themes one's a phrase and one's one word because the chaos is coming. I mean, um, uh, let me just point out a couple more transits here in 2022 quickly. I'll show, I know maybe we've lost a little bit of that the kind of year by year flow. I don't think we were intending to do that anyway, but this is the big, the big moment in April. So if you go to like uh, 15, 12 April, something like this, uh, 2022, we have a once in a generation. Uh, let me get the outers back yeah. on. A once, yeah, I was a once looking at April. 
where you have the modern ruler of Pisces, Neptune, the traditional ruler, Jupiter, the exaltation ruler, Venus, and then the triplicity ruler, the secondary, but the main triplicity ruler, the uh, night triplicity ruler comes and they're all together. This hasn't happened until I think 15, since 1526, roughly. Wow. Um, but this is mute, mutable water. This is like the kind of sea change, the changes that come. I think this is a, a real, my theme of this has been grief. I think we're going to be in a heavy grief state. I think uh, that come too. April. Yeah. And there's yeah. weeping, sadness. A lot of loss. Loss. Of, yeah. Uh, yeah, just as, like, like it's finally hitting this year in 2022. That's why I say sometimes grief is chaotic. If you've ever been in the throes of really deep grief, sometimes you lose like days or weeks yes. I mean, or lose consciousness for hours from weeping. And, so, you know, that's this Pisces energy to me that hits in mm -hmm. April. And um, oh, and she so, yeah, is ahead. there too. I was just, I just, if I can just jump in, not to, yeah, please, please. I want to hear. Sorry, what sorry to say. just, I get excited no, here. No, it's okay. Uh, I love on. it. I just can't help it sometimes. Go ahead. Sorry, no, it's sorry, fine. Sorry. You have to come back more often. Um, uh, but the uh, with Jupiter there, very close to Sheet. Sheet is at twenty eight Pisces, and that's like really talk about wailing and that feeling of marginalized and loss, and you know the fixed star. So um, adding to all that yeah okay yeah and that will come i'm just going to get that i've got my i put more fixed stars on here i have a whole a bunch of different ones so uh sheet um S -S -C -H -E -A -T. there it is so it's it starts hitting in april jupiter will be within in late april it comes within that two degree right. orb, of, orb of sheet which, which is right the eclipse the solar eclipse is right 30th the next day is the solar eclipse so there it yeah, is so conjunct that, sheet so, yeah, there it is. That's, Jupiter that's why I, I was looking at April going, whoa, April, whoa. I'm going to have to take a deeper dive into that in, in the, you know, as we get there. But yeah, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and Venus and Jupiter are conjoined, actually, while at, during that sheet, that sheet conjunction. Right, Because right. they're right, right in that same degree with Neptune. And this is, to me, feels like heavy duty, like divine. Right. Uh, Grief compassion. is about divinity, compassion, yeah. sadness, grief, but the love that comes from that, the wellspring. Right. Uh, you know, rescue. Unconditional from... love and inspiration. Yes. Look, look at the musical inspiration that's going to come and the poetry and the dance from this grief. It, it, yes. It's an outpouring, an outpouring. Yes. An outpouring. Yeah. Oh my God, I want to cry. But we're all going to be there. We're all here for each other. And Mars, Mars is right there too. You know, Mars and Pisces. And yep. Look at that. Holy moly. Yep, it's beautiful. So, and it's Uranus, huge... can we just say, look, you know, let's look at that. Sun, you know, Uranus is conjunct the sun. And, you know, to that solar eclipse, you got Uranus right there in the mix, that sudden change. Of course, Venus ruling this this Uranus journey. So there it is again, you know, this yep. a sudden outpouring of grief. <laughs> Flows back in, exactly. It's ruling the eclipse. I mean, that's very, very key. Yeah. And Venus rules the eclipse. Yeah. Venus rules the eclipse. And and it brings us right back to this Jupiter Venus conjunction. It's within one degree minute during the eclipse. That's how close yeah. Jupiter and Venus are going to be together. I mean, this is wow. That's, a, I, that's epic. This, it's epic. It is transformative. It is, you can't understate, in my view. I think this coming after all of that Saturn heavy, Mercury, Venus retrograde that comes earlier, um, Pluto return, the bottoming of the Barbo index. This is where we really start maybe the grief, the sadness, and there's an opening here. We're coming into warmer weather in the northern hemisphere and i think that's important because of uh, the respiratory illnesses that's defining the narrative now and people are going to get sick you know this happens and they say covid's endemic maybe now and you know but other respiratory illnesses flus pneumonias that all hits and now we're getting warmer so i think this you know hopefully there's some optimism that can emerge and um we're kind of moving out that's what i see here of you know, what we've just gone through. Um, so it's you know, important. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, you know, I think like Neptune rules infections. It's like, okay, well, what do, then we ask ourselves, well, what do we want to be infected by? 
I'd like to be infected with compassion. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be infected by some nasty pathogen. I'm going to choose compassion because that that's like the best, the best thing of all. Yeah. You're going to get infected Absolutely. with something. Let it be unconditional love. Yes. <laughs> I don't Absolutely. know. Just my thought. No, it's beautiful. And this is like, I mean, Christ is the, is the spiritual figure of the age of Pisces, you know, the, the fish. Um, right. And, and that's the symbol of the, so to bring up that Christ theme back in, this is kind of like a very Christ driven, I think, energy uh, in April, where we will have maybe access to some, hopefully this deep, profound, unconditional love and this kind of Christ consciousness um, this kind of Christ-like compassion. I think that's a beautiful way to think about April. Um, and, and so, you know, it's, yeah, it underscores just that Christian symbolism though. Yes, it does. It's interesting about the age of Pisces and yeah. Wow. The Pisces into the Aquarian age. Woo. Yeah. It's wild, man. 2022, every, you know, 2020, 2020 was wild and crazy. We had our own brand of it this year. Next year, it's just a different face of it. These are all the various facets of this transformation where we end up in that basket that's coming in a few years. So it's, yeah, it's pretty amazing. But I, I, I feel, I know personally, I'm very grateful that you have shown us this because um, you know it, it's just to see it all encapsulated in that, in that graph of the basket was like, whew. you know, I think it's, we, we have, as astrologers, of course, we're always breaking down things. We do macro, but to see it that macro is priceless. So I'm really grateful. Boy, I, I had no idea you're going to show me that today, but I, I just knew you had to be on. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. Thanks. Yeah. I'm, you know, this is as a pro astrologer, this is my full time gig, and it's just I'm saturated in this. And the thing is, I can't ever i don't really tire from ever talking about it so right. that's how you kind of know you're on the right path in life when it's just like a, my energy seems to be endless so consumed uh, when, with yes all of us who have studied astrology yeah. and are studying we're all yeah we're like okay it, it, it's just yeah you're consumed and it's not and not in a bad way it's no. good you know <laughs> it's to yeah, see it's, the connections is like it's priceless i honestly i think that we're um we're entering into an age where I, I feel like one day we will have um, we'll have school where we, we teach school children these things like like the way it was a long time ago. And, and uh, we have no record of school children having been taught this, like if you want to be rational about it, like in the Hellenistic documents that have survived. We, we don't ever hear about children being that way. We barely hear about women, let alone children. But um, but I just think personally in the in like soul collective, like will we'll be um, attuning, everybody will be coming attuned to this. Uh, and it may be until, I mean, it's, we're, we're being held, we're sustaining each other through until the basket gets created. <laughs> but I think once that basket is there, it's going to flourish like unbelievably. That's just my feeling. Astrology, <laughs> part of everybody's yeah. normal conversation. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be nice when we could be, um, you know, I see more of that some, there's, you know, and certainly an awareness of the sun sign. And I think the rise in pop astrology that has come with uh, social media's increasing dominance um, has been good for us in some ways, because there is at least a basic vocabulary that's been expanded in the, you know, collective mind. So, you know, I think we are setting ourselves up, hopefully, for at least those that even that want to go deeper are able to dive deeper um, in those coming years. So anyhow, that's kind of a whole nother topic of astrology and, and the collective. And, you know, it's, I got a lot to say about that too, but I, I don't want to lie. No, <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah. We can do another podcast episode. Where, yeah, we'll just, yeah. It's just wonderful to, um, to just feel that empowerment. This is the, this is the power of astrology to, that we can look at cycles and we can create empowering conversations and contexts into which, we move um, as we face these intense, difficult times. So um, that's the beauty of astrology. Peace, Whew. you know, just a load off of you and, and a sense of perspective. God, there's nothing like it. There is nothing like this. 
I'm so grateful. I am so grateful to you, SJ. I'm so grateful to Achuta and all the teachers that I've had in astrology. Achuta's been my fourth teacher um, and uh, over the years, over 20 years. And uh, boy, I'm just, I'm just blown away by um, how it has influenced my life. And that's, that's why I do it. And I know that's why you do it. This is why we do it. We do it for this reason. Yeah. So where, yes. what is your, your website is, um, tell me, SJ Anderson. SJ Anderson, SJ Anderson with an O, uh, 144, sjanderson144.com. Just go there. You'll have everything, um, a link to my YouTube channel, my Instagram. There's, you know, a sidebar that has right at the top, click here to schedule a reading for those that are interested in that. I do readings. I have, um, yeah, a link to my Twitter, which is where I'm also highly active on social media. Uh, Twitter and YouTube are my main social media platforms for my astrological content. So people can follow me there. But yeah, it's all linked uh, at sjanderson144.com. Cool. Yay. Is there anything else before we wrap up? I mean, as we wrap up, just um, any, any further thoughts or anything else you want to share? Um, I mean, I'll just quickly mentioned a couple other just two other things maybe quickly is that mm -hmm. so we have this year in the summer we're going to have jupiter in aries and mars and jupiter will be in aries in late may and into june um, and i think that fiery jupiter very powerful potent energy uh, with mars there may be some i don't know anger I'm thinking about the 60s when things kind of, this is why I said chaos and counterculture, because once the 60s blew open, there was, I mean, all, excuse me, all hell for lack of a better term. I mean, they're just that phrase, all hell breaks loose. And then right. there's just kind of chaos with movements and riots and violence and upheaval. I think there's, a, there's an element of that that comes into 2022. And we saw a summer 2020, when you had a lot of fire energy protests when we came out of that first lockdown remember that and it was just mm -hmm. protests all of all kinds hit in america i think we're going to see a real fiery kind of angry uh, response in some ways to what we go through this winter um and I, I you know so try to transmute that if you're out there and you're feeling that there's constructive kind of protest that's fine but uh, you know be safe um, but it's also going to be time for for passionate action. You know, you'll have support maybe coming into spring and summer uh, after this difficult, these lockdowns, whatever we're about to go through, where you might be for the first time in a, in a while able to move and act because Saturn will not be squaring Aries. Saturn is now in uh, um, Aquarius making that sextile. So there's a, there's room, I think, in 2022 for some of the most active uh you know potential in a long time um mm -hmm. in that summer and then the only one other thing i will say courage and bravery courage bravery yeah yeah enjoy but enjoyment too right like, wow right. we can this is this is you know and so wow um, yeah the jupiter wow factor <laughs> yeah the wow and then this is i'm powerful i can do this maybe even <laughs> there'll be some openings right i mean maybe people will for the first time i think that comes more 20 later but where it's like hey i can get on a plane and go to this country and i don't have to go isolate or have these herbs to jump through you know i actually don't think that comes necessarily in 2022 but maybe in places there might be some of that emergent right um, get a little preview of of the entire jupiter and aries that comes in at the end of next year right yeah and in 2023 another dose of it um and then i think so i want to mention that um the nodes quickly the second thing uh, in uh south node and Scorpio North Node in Taurus. The reason mm. why I say counterculture, this happened in the 1960s, the middle part of the 1960s with the uh, Leary, LSD, communal living, and it climaxes with the summer of love. The first half of that summer of love in 1967 was when that transit ends in Taurus Scorpio. And, and Scorpio. But then you have Mars, Venus ruled signs when the nodes go into the next sign, right? 
Aries Libra. So we've got a lot of Mars Venus dominating this eclipse upcoming eclipse cycle for about three and a half years. That's mm -hmm. all the relationship, love, pleasure, all of that stuff is in play. And I think community and connection, there will be some counterculturals emerging, countercultures emerging, especially in places where people don't have a choice. Maybe there's some communal living or farm life as they leave cities or get off social media if this gets too intense. So that's the second thing. And then just the last thing I want to mm -hmm. leave people with, Mars sure. will retrograde at the end of the year. Mars and Gemini turns mm -hmm. backward and it lasts into 2023. But that Mars retrograde is going to trigger, I think, um, a lot of the processing. It's it's trining Saturn and Aquarius. And I think we'll have some time to now process the so-called new normal, where maybe we're looking back and there's some truth and maybe passion around some of the things we're learning about what we've just gone through. And there might be you know, more processing some of that um, force as we kind of learn more. Uh, so just another transit to look out for. Those are some of the other big ones I feel like we should just throw out. Uh, people can stay tuned to your podcast, my channels, astrologers everywhere. We always love breaking everything down and you'll get heavy doses of breakdowns as much as you want out there as we get into this year. But Super, excellent. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm so glad we had this convo. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me on again. It's really enjoyable and um, just an honor and privilege to speak with you. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Um, all right, so uh, sjanderson144.com is, is his website. So give him a ring as the Brits would say, well, a digital ring. <laughs> but um, all right, anyway, so guys, all right. Um, I, it sounds funny, happy eclipsing, right? So I, I my, my intention and my prayer, of course, is that we are all using all of these uh, transits and cycles of time as astrological cycles as opportunities to evolve our consciousness. That's really the bottom line of what it's all about. So um, I'm sure that, uh, and that is my wish and my prayer and my hope for, for all of us uh, as we move through these times together, ensemble, as they say in French, um, we do it together and um, yeah, so there you go. All right, everybody. Well, um, we will see you in, again soon, all for the next episode of Star Sound Speaks, starsoundastrology.com. This is Irliana Samsara. Thank you all for joining us. Have a great one. Take care now. <laughs>